when you look at its beginnings from the 1960, we as a country don't have that history of indigenous manufacture that you know other countries across the European system, like for example Germany, would have. Our industry has grown amazingly in you know almost a 60-year period, and we should be very proud of that. But I'm also really proud of the role our agency has played in that growth. And you know you ha you have to measure yourself as an agency constantly to see how you're performing, but. For us, what's been incredible about that is that endorsement isn't coming from how we perceive ourselves, it's how we are perceived by others. And certainly the feedback that we get unsolicited from the industry is that we are a very firm and a very tough regulator, but fair. But they value the strength of the oversight role that we have provide, that because they can say that once they invest here and once they come through our evaluation, it equips them really in terms of a way where they can you know work through the processes with the FDA other regulators across the globe but they get much better certainty in the investment and I think that's really indicative of the approach we take it's going to bring a lot more efficiency into the approval process because you now have a situation where it's possible to get an authorization in many countries through the single application process so I think that harmonization and that efficiency is hugely valuable for both patients in terms of the capability to authorize trials, but also for us as regulators in terms of avoiding duplication, getting the best use of our collective expertise. But you're also looking at a process whereby you're now harmonizing both the ethical decision making and approval and then the scientific approval of a clinical trial and bringing those processes together in tandem to reach a single decision has huge benefits, you know, in terms of increasing you know, the, the contribution from the ethics sides in terms of trials and, and harmonizing that with the scientific side. And then, of course, there's, there's the transparency elements of it, which is a really big step change in terms of, you know, increasing the patient involvement and the public involvement and the public understanding of the processes for approval of medicines. But also there's the innovation agenda. I think, you know, having all of the information on you know, the clinical trials, the approval process, the decision making, the data that's available to other innovators, I think really positions the innovation pipeline in a different way to learn from the experience of others and to actually, you know, increase the pace of innovation and to kind of fast track in a way that's really safe because we're learning, you know, um, from what others have done so that we can bring forward the pipeline in in a much more speedy way, but in a way that still affords the highest standards of safety for patients. As a system, you know, it has huge strengths, but we all must look to get better. And I do think on the innovation side that w some of the challenges really are that we have to be able to keep pace. And I think the speed at which change can happen, if, you know, from both a legislative viewpoint and often from a policy viewpoint, has to become more flexible and has to become more adaptable. And I think the way to do this is being future focused, to really see innovation at an early stage. And this is what you are seeing is kind of the, the regulatory system, particularly on the European side. I mean, I would say that maybe, it's often said that maybe Japan and the States have been ahead of us and they possibly have been, but I, I think you've really seen a huge step change on the European side within the last five, six years. I mean, I've worked in the area of regulation of medicines for over 17 years. The language and the dialogue that we're having in the last five, six years is entirely different and it's very much so focused on how can we better support innovation. I mean, as a regulator, we don't give birth to innovation. That's, that's not the job that we have, but we absolutely have to be able to support it as it evolves. So having that flexibility and adaptability is hugely important in the system. We live in a very much so a digitalized age. We live in an age of social media and the internet. There is so much information and the big data piece is very much so touted and is part of the regulatory discussion that we are actually having now. There is so much that we can get from big data. The trick for us is being able to, to get it and use it in a way where it can be robust enough to inform regulatory decision making and I think ultimately there is huge power in that for us to make better decisions as regulators but for us we have to know how to use it better and I think that is really what the focus is kind of on now it's it's to get it in a way where we can validate it make it useful but also gather information from registries you know even in a way that's very structured that it's designed from the beginning to help inform the regulatory decision making so it's not something where we go gosh there's a lot of information in registries, but it's not really useful for us because it hasn't been structured in the right way. I think 
you know, in the design and the setup of regulators, having our, our registries, having us at the table, you know, to actually discuss with healthcare providers, those working in healthcare systems, those working even in procurement, to actually sit down and say, if a register is designed this way and it has a capability to collect the following information, that could be very useful for us in terms of the benefit risk decision making, and that could have huge, you know, um, uh, you know, that could bring huge power into kind of looking at how we support innovation in a different way as well too. So I think it's, we need to embrace it because it isn't going to go away in terms of the internet side of things. We live in a, a digitalized and a fast driven technology area. I think it's, it's capitalizing on that, availing of the opportunity and using it to empower us is really where we have to become as a regulator.